I also am like short of breath. I'm talking? Okay. It's not really that strenuous of an activity. But Welcome back to my channel. It's Narissa and I am back with a pregnancy update. Um, this is a little weird because I am filming these way advanced because no one knows. So I'll be posting these in the future um, after I am in the clear. So if you want to hear what my weeks five and six were like, stay tuned. Okay, so like I mentioned in my um, first pregnancy video weeks one through four, um, I Hey buddy. I mentioned that um, my husband and I first recently found out that we were or I was pregnant with our first child and the last two weeks I'm currently right now today seven weeks and one day pregnant and the last two weeks were crazy um, I was really really sick and also had to make a quick trip a couple times because my doctor wanted to make sure that everything was okay because of all of the pain that I was having. Uh, it's also been very difficult not letting people at work know and them having no idea why I'm acting the way I am too. Um, if you were really to pay close attention and like just really play close, close attention, you would know. That's why I'm not convinced that my my mom and like my cousin, for example, don't know. It's just been really difficult not letting the people in, close in my life know. But um, I think it's the right decision. So I hope they're not mad at me in the future after we're all in the clear. But anyway, so getting into my symptoms and whatnot in weeks five and six of my first pregnancy, um, I made some notes. So my boobs started to hurt, started to be sore this um, in, in these two weeks, starting in the fifth week. And I was still a little bit sick with a head cold in the fifth week. And um, just in general, a little queasy and crampy on Monday. And I think I stayed home from work Monday and Tuesday of the fifth week because I was still dealing with that head cold. So then I was planning on going to work Wednesday. I did go to work on Wednesday of the fifth week and I woke up and had awful, like didn't even get a chance to brush my teeth yet. Like woke up, got up, went to the bathroom, all of a sudden horrible cramps. I'm talking debilitating cramps, like sitting on the edge of the bed, you know, just, I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't yell for Mike. I couldn't, I didn't do anything at all. I was just sitting here like, breathing it, it literally felt like I was having extremely strong contractions because it was all sent right in the center wasn't on one side or the other it just felt like hot burning muscle twisting and contorting and stretching it was awful it was it was it was awful so of course that I'm expecting to for that to be followed with blood or something and nothing ever happened, so I started to do some quick Google searches and um, found this like blog post and chat thread that was basically all about women in their between their fifth and sixth week having these stomach cramps or you know abdominal pain, and some of them were pretty severe. And you know, I read so it kind of calmed my nerves a little bit. Then so that was that was Wednesday and it lasted about 10 or 15 minutes and then it subsided and I felt I felt better well then it happened again at like two o'clock at this point I was at work so um, it was pretty difficult to you know work with these debilitating cramps and especially if someone walks in my office like when this is happening I can't even talk like so this happened off and on throughout my fifth week and into the sixth week. And sometimes it was really, really bad. And sometimes it was more mild, which is what I have read is more um, common, like mild period cramps. So I just, you know, I was like, oh, I'm probably having twins or something. And 
you know, that's why it's extra bad or that's my first pregnancy that could make it extra hard. So now I'm getting to the point going into my sixth week where I'm like, just, just waiting for these really, really bad cramps to happen. I know it's going to happen. And, um, you know, I'm just like scared and nervous about it because it hurts so bad and just, and I, you know, I can't do anything. There's nothing I can do to make it better. I just have to like deal with it and get through it. And um, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna just call the doctor. And I've had no bleeding, no spotting and nothing this entire time. I decided I was gonna call the doctor and just um, let her know and see if there was anything that maybe I could do about it or, you know, to help the pain or like, why is this happening? So I called the nurse and I explained to her and she called me back pretty quickly and said that my doctor wanted me to hurry up and get to um, the town, which is like an hour away where she is, and go to prompt care and get a blood draw. And this was at like three o'clock in the afternoon. So I was still at work. And then that next morning, she wanted me there at 8.30 to do an ultrasound and make sure that I wasn't having an eptopic pregnancy because the pain, you know, that's what that pain could mean. And so, you know, I'm so exhausted at this point. I'm like, oh, now I have to drive an hour. And it's actually in the same town that my husband works in. So I had to go home, switch vehicles, do a few things with our animals you know, drive the hour at this point, that makes me a little, even even a little further away, drive the hour and 15 minutes to get there, got my blood drawn and I was just so exhausted, but anyway, made it. So, um, that was Wednesday. So Thursday, then I had the doctor's appointment bright and early. And so very first thing went in to do an ultrasound. And at first they did the um, external ultrasound and saw that it was not an eptopic pre pregnancy. Super long story short, it was it's not an eptopic pregnancy and everything was fine. And we got to see the little baby and we got to see its heartbeat flickering and um, it was really exciting and strange and crazy and awesome and all of that combined into one. So then after we did that and then went and talked to the doctor and she I had a couple ideas of maybe why I was feeling so much pain, but, um, you know, nothing, nothing serious was going on. So since then I, so the next day at work on Friday, I did have a couple episodes and it was not as severe as they had been, but you know, on a scale of one to 10, if severe is 10, you know, they were like a seven. And I'm just like, how am I going to do this for, you know, the next, what, four or five, six weeks? Because I also had read that the cramping and whatnot should subside more so when you go into your second trimester. But anyway, I actually have had cramp-free days for the last two days. So knock on wood. Um, maybe I am over that or I'm doing something differently that is helping with that. Um, TMI, but she did suggest that I get some stool softeners and it, it could be a combination of a bunch of different things that is making me have this severe cramping pain. Because at this point, your uterus is growing and stretching and making room for baby. So um, that's, that's what these cramps are about, but generally they are not severe but mine were severe, debilitating. At one point I was on the phone at work and I started to get one, started it. I would just call them episodes and it was awful. I'm like, you know, like sweating and like just trying to get through the phone call and, um, you know, politely get off the phone as quickly as possible without sounding like a complete rude person. But anyway, so the other symptoms besides this severe cramping that I've been dealing with, which has just been awful, has been bloating big time. None of my clothes fit whatsoever. None of my clothes fit. Jeans are completely uncomfortable. The only thing that's comfortable on to me is like high waisted tights, 
um, that are a little bit big, you know, not super tight, and just loose clothes, which what I've been wearing to work has completely changed. Like it really wouldn't be that big, of, that, that hard of a thing to guess that I'm pregnant because of all of these changes that I have been having. So bloating, that's, that's where I was going with that. Bloating for sure. Um, I know I'm gaining weight because I'm having some food issues. Um, nausea is not confined to the morning. Morning sickness for me is basically all morning, all afternoon, all night. It just comes and goes. Um, I have figured out it's mainly when my stomach gets empty. So, and, and it seems like I'm digesting food a lot quicker. Um, or I'm hungry more. That I'm hungry more. My stomach's empty more. My stomach's growling. Like late breakfast, and two hours later, um, you know, my stomach's growling, and I'm hungry again. And like I need to eat because otherwise I'm feeling completely nauseous and lightheaded. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, I had been eating healthy, and I, I can't imagine eating a salad right now. Like that is not anything that I could imagine even eating right now. So um, I have had issues with nausea and that has been occurring throughout the entire day and night and morning. Uh, the other thing is like pure complete exhaustion, just purely exhausted, a different kind of exhaustion than I'm used to, you know, where you have a long day and you're running constantly and you worked all day and you you come home and you know you're really busy at night and it's it's different it's a different kind of exhaustion I have no energy to do anything you know like today it's a really nice day it's like 60 degrees it's not windy it's the first nice day we've had that's not windy normally I would be out running I would go for a long run and enjoy this warm day no mm -mm. can't even imagine doing that like I got up, cleaned the kitchen up, you know, did some chores or whatnot, and um, ate breakfast, and then I had to basically go back to bed and take a nap. I mean, I'm not sleeping the greatest either, but I had to take a nap already after that, and so, yeah, exhaustion. Um, my husband's been really, really great in helping, well, basically doing everything because I'm so too exhausted to do anything, and this is another issue with not having my family know his for example yesterday um, my cousin was in town and we were going to go to Peoria and I wanted to go and I knew it was a bad idea because it was going to be too much for me I was just going to be too tired and I was afraid I was going to have some episodes and I didn't want you know to tell them well then I ended up being the one that drove and we went like you know a town that's an hour away went shopping and running all day got home did some stuff at my mom's house before I went home. So I think I left, well, I got there about, no, I got there about 11 and then I didn't get home until nine. By the time I got home, I was just like in tears. I hurt so bad. I was so tired just and so sick. So I've also found out that if I just do too much, I get a lot more sick. Like I need to scale it back just a little bit, but they don't know you know, and I don't want to tell them at this point until we're in the clear. So I can't be like, you know, no, I'm not driving. Why? You know, I need to stop and go to the bathroom after 30 minutes after I just went. Why? Oh, I'm drinking a bunch of water. <laughs> it's, it's just hard. But anyway, exhaustion. It is legit. It is a real legit symptom of early pregnancy. Holy cow. So, you know, I had all these plans and oh, I'm going to exercise throughout my entire pregnancy. I'm still going to run 5Ks. I'm still going to um, be extremely active like normal. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I can't even get the house clean. I mean, I can't even do like small tasks, let alone, you know, go run a 10K or something. But I, I, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it gets better. Um, at the end of week six, I did 
feel a little bit better a couple days other than yesterday, which was actually yesterday was the um, first day of week seven. So can't really include that in, in this two week update, but so severe cramping, nausea and issues with food. I didn't really go into the issues with food too much. Just nothing sounds good. I can't even think about eating anything other than like peanut butter and jelly or pancakes or like these granola bars that I um, like from Aldi or, you know, stuff with a lot of bread, which is awful. I need to be eating more healthy fruit. I, I have been able to eat fruit. Fruit is good. Um, I just ate like a whole can of peaches and then had pancakes this morning. But, you know, I bought like two big things of corned beef for St. Patrick's Day, which is today. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And, oh, no. Like, Mike put it in a crock pot and he's fixing it, but I told him, I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat it, but whatever. I'll try. We'll see. Um, I am going to make myself some chicken salad. For some reason, that sounds like something I might be able to eat because I am one that I meal prep my lunches you know, on the weekends for the following week. And it's usually some type of salad or healthy lunch. And I can't even think about that. Like, no, 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 no. So anyway, yes. Let's see what else I have on my notes. Um, don't know how we do it. I don't know how women that work out of the home go through this first trimester of pregnancy, especially when you're at the point where no one knows and, and you aren't um, willing to, to tell anybody because of the circumstances. I haven't felt, you know, cranky or irritable or anything like that these last couple weeks. It's just been exhaustion and nausea and <sighs> just feeling pretty sick. But anyway, um, so in general, this week was rough. We had little bit of a scare which ended in you know a positive um, I am have resulted in wearing tights and sweatshirts or t-shirts <laughs> and jeans are out of the question I need to buy some new clothes that's for sure I have had lots of issues with food and just been purely exhausted. I feel so like worthless <laughs> and pitiful because I can't do anything. I, I struggle to do anything at this point because I'm so exhausted and I can't do anything about it. That is my pregnancy update weeks five and six. So we will see how weeks seven and eight go. I also am like short of breath talking okay it's not really that strenuous of an activity but apparently uh, my body is tired enough that even just talking is a little difficult so I hope you enjoyed this pregnancy update I hope that you um, expecting moms out there gained a little bit of info or um, reduce a little bit of your worry maybe with my story these last couple of weeks and you know don't panic I had some severe cramping that really could only have led to one idea one thought and that that wasn't the case everything is fine and I am NOT kidding when I say severe made me sick one time at work when I, I had a really bad episode at work and I got sick because of the pain um, it wasn't you know because of anything else but so anyway, hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos. If you're new to my channel, I not only post pregnancy updates, but um, I also post food, cooking, canning, homestead type videos, grocery hauls, things like that. And also some random things that I am into. So stick around and I'd love to see you later. Thanks. Bye.